I'm Andy from Aquatic Source, Michigan Pool News. We're at a, a state-of-the-art equipment room that was just renovated last year. We want to talk to, to you about the VEX controllers. What I want to show first is when they redid this equipment room, they put in a ground bar. All the equipment in here all comes to this ground bar, which is great for the electronics in here because of the stray electricity. Uh, here we've got the BEX control. This is doing the water chemistry in the pool. It's also doing uh, different sensors that I'll talk about in a minute. We have a pH probe, an ORP probe. We have the lighted flow cell. This is a CP1, which is a total part or a free part per million probe. So it will control your chlorine by part per million. We have the flow meter so that we can keep it between six to eight gallons uh, on here so that we don't over exceed the flow rate through the CP1 probe. We have the Y strainer to prevent any debris from getting into the probe or the flow cell. We also have in this bypass loop, we have a uh, TDS sensor. It'll, it'll sense all the total dissolved solids from the chlorine or anything else in the water. Uh, with this controller incorporating that total dissolved solids probe, we can put a half inch uh, solenoid valve connected to this unit and by setting a set point on it, if the levels of total dissolved solids go above that set point, it will actually open a solenoid valve dumping water to the sewer and your autofill will replace it to keep your total dissolved solids at a normal level between 1500 to 2000. Another thing we've got is this unit, we have a ORP probe, which is how well the chlorine works, but we're also controlling a bias uh, free chlorine probe. So it actually is calibrated and matches up with your test kit, where a lot of the other units only use a uh, ORP probe, and it's harder for some of the pool, uh, your lifeguards to understand how it correlates to your pool. On this unit, we are testing for pH and maintaining pH. We're also doing the ORP level to get a reading on it, how well the chlorine's working. We've got free chlorine, which is what we're testing for to maintain the levels in the pool. We have total dissolved solids on this one is 1286. We want to keep it somewhere around that 1500. We also have, on this one, we have a surge pit level. If the surge tank for some reason starts to overflow from a power uh, or a pump shutdown, it will actually uh, send a, an alarm through the ethernet that's in here to the operator's phone and either a text or an email. We also have the flow rate coming on. You can set that as an alarm also. If the flow rate drops too low, it'll send the operator either a text or an email. It'll also show up on their phone as an alarm. We have the flow rate. Uh, on this one right here, we can control set points as to where we want to maintain the level. Here we've, we're maintaining the pH at 7.5. We're maintaining chlorine free available at 2.5. We also have a trigger point for booster that if for some reason the salt generator that's making chlorine in the pool drops too low for part per million, it will automatically turn on a center pump with a liquid chlorine vat to boost the chlorine level and maintain, especially if you have a heavy baler load from a meat or a, uh, a, a large meat over the weekend where you're going nonstop all day. Normal uh, cleanings on these or what you need to do to maintain it is periodically you need to pull out your probes by shutting off the, the flow to it. You would turn the power off to the unit, unthread your ORP and your pH probe. You can take a solution of Dawn dish soap or any soap, dip the tip of it in, use a toothbrush to remove any oil. You can take a diluted solution of muriatic acid, dip the tip of it in and use a toothbrush also. In between, always rinsing it with water. Put Teflon tape back in, re-thread it back in. Uh, then you would turn the flow back on for at least a half hour or so, so it would flush any remaining product off the unit, recalibrate your unit. The other one we have is a CP1 probe. In order to do that, we have to shut the, the unit off, shut the flow off, and remove this cell, 
remove the cover which has little beads in it and the beads actually keep everything clean but eventually the chemistry will make it turn green. So you take this flow cell off, remove the lid and dump out the, the little beads out of it. You can use a vinegar or a really uh, light solution of muriatic acid to clean that with a little tiny brush. When you're done rinsing it off, put a new package of the beads back in, put the lid back on, put it back together, let the water flow through it for about a half an hour or so before you put power back on and try to calibrate it because it will take a while for that solution to clear itself. We also have the Y strainer that periodically you're going to have to ch check because anything that gets through your filter system is going to stop this, drop the flow, and when it drops, this lighted flow cell has the float here that will actually turn this red telling you there's not enough flow. This is Andy for Aquatic Source and Michigan Pool News. Thank you.